Welcome to Cats Tutorials, and in this video, we're going to be covering practice problem 4.11. Now, in this problem, we are asked to find the Norton equivalent of this circuit. So, let's start by finding uh, the Norton equivalent resistance. So, what we do is we turn off all the independent sources or we'll take them out. Taking out the current source will lead to an open circuit, and taking out the voltage source will lead to a short circuit. So this is the new circuit that we have when finding the Norton uh, equivalent resistance. So this is what we have. All right. Now, um, all we have to do is to find the equivalent of this. So we see that these two are in series. So we can add them up. 3 plus 3 is actually 6. And finally, you'll see that this new 6 and that 6 actually share two nodes, which means they are, they are in parallel. So the combination of that is actually the answer. So there's a trick that says if you have two values or two resistors which are in parallel and they have the same value, then combining them in parallel will actually lead to half of their value. You can confirm this by using the method itself or by actually solving. So this uh, divided by 6 plus 6. So this is 36 divided by 12, which is 3. This is just a trick which you can use to work through your problems uh, quicker. So whenever you have resistors which are equal in parallel, then your answer will be half of one of the values. So now we move on to find um, we move on to find the Norton current, right? Move on to find the Norton current, so which is here, which is the short circuit current. So now this is a short circuit, and the value of a short circuit is um, is R equals to zero ohms. So this R is equal to 0 ohms is parallel to 6. So anything parallel to 0 is 0, which means we'll have another short circuit. So this is shorted by this. So our new circuit would look like this. And everything stays as it was. Just that this short circuit shorted the 6 out and that's why we're drawing this new circuit. Right. So this is our new circuit. Now to find IN, you can use super mesh analysis, which is probably going to be longer. Or you can essentially use our nodal analysis, call that V, and then say V subtract 15 divided by 3 negative 4 plus V divided by 3 is equal to 0. Multiplying through by 3, we have V subtract 15, subtract 12, plus V is equal to 0. Then we have, adding these two, we have 2V is equal to, this is our 27. So V is equal to 27 divided by 2, right? We have 27 divided by 2, which is essentially equals to 13.5. Volts. Right, because 13 times 2 is 26, and adding two halves gives you 1, which is 27. Fine. So this is 13.5, but we are interested in finding IN. But what is IN in terms of V? So IN is V divided by 3. So we found our V to be 13.5, so you're going to say 13.5 divided by 3. And the answer to that is 4.5. 4.5 times 2 is 9. Then adding 4, you have 13, and then adding a half, you have 13 and a half. So 4.5 um, amperes is your IN. And this is how you solve this particular problem.